So if we go back to this problem, so this is the translation problem. We have an input sentence x. We're going to search through all possible derivations for the sentence. Each one has this score, so f of y is equal to the score I showed you before. And we're going to try to find the highest scoring derivation under this score. Okay. So again, this set y of x is typically exponential in size. And so certainly the, the brute force method of explicitly enumerating every possible derivation then scoring it is in no way going to be feasible. So the next thing we're going to do is develop uh, an algorithm for uh, this problem. Now it's worth noting this problem is actually very hard. It's almost certainly an NP hard problem. And um, that is going to mean that we're going to have to develop a heuristic method uh, for solving this problem based on beam search. So we'll see how we develop an approximate search algorithm for this problem, but an algorithm which really performs quite well in practice. So a first key idea in this algorithm is going to be the idea of a state. So a state is a five tu tuple. Here's an example. We might have a state we must. And then say we have a sentence of length x1, x2, up to x7. Um, the first two elements of this tuple are two words, we must, essentially corresponding to the last two words of a translation. We'll see uh, again with an example on the next slide how this works out. B is going to be a bit string of length uh, the, 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 of the same length as the input sentence. So we might have this bit string here. R is going to be some integer and alpha is going to be some score. Okay, so what do these uh, states intuitively correspond to? This is saying I formed a translation ending the words we must and which translates words one and two in the sentence but none of the other words. So this bit string is going to record, keep track of which words in the input sentence have actually been translated. Uh, this position two is going to be the end point of the last phrase. So for example, we might have used the phrase we must as the last phrase in building this state. And so this, this records this. This is going to allow us to uh, enforce the distortion limit and also to calculate distortion scores. And then finally, this is going to be some score indicating uh, the score of the partial translation that has reached this state. The initial state is always going to be the following. It has star star. So these are the usual start symbols in our language model. So this just reflects that the, the start of the translation always starts off with star star. We have a bit string specifying that none of the input words have been translated. So it's all zeros, seven zeros in this case, assuming the input is length seven. We have zero as the endpoint of the previous phrase because we're at the very start of the sentence. And we have zero for the score because uh, this partial translation hasn't used any phrases yet. And so the score is essentially zero. So it's going to be very useful to think of the search space in this translation problem as essentially a directed graph with these states I've shown you on the previous slide as the nodes in this graph. Let me explain what I mean. So let's assume that this is again the sentence we're trying to translate. And what I've shown you here is again the start state. So we have star star, we have seven zeros specifying these seven words. Uh, none of them have been translated at this point. We have zero, this is the end point of the last phrase, and zero is the score. So given this state, I can choose the first phrase in the translation. So let's for example, assume we choose this phrase here. So we translate the first two words as we must. I'll label this arc with this choice of phrase. And here's the uh, state we end up with. So it's going to be we must. And now I'm going to have the following bit string specifying 
that the first two words have been translated, the other ones haven't. I'll have two because that's the end point of this phrase here. And I'll have some score, like minus 1.5, for example. Okay, so these arcs are going to be labeled with choices of phrases, and they're going to lead from one state to another. Intuitively, this arc corresponds to the choice of this phrase, one, two, we must, at the very start of the sentence. Let me talk a little bit about how this score is calculated. So in this case, it would be the following. It would be combination of the language modeling scores, the phrase scores, and also the distortion score. So we'd have language modeling scores, which were uh, log q of we, given star star, plus log q must, uh, given star we. So we have one of these log q terms for each word, uh, we and must. And then we have g of one, two, we must. Recall that that's the score for this choice of phrase, for uh, matching we must with wir müssen. And finally, we have Ader times the distortion. And in this case, the distortion is where we have the previous phrase ended at point 0. We have 1 here. So we have, by the usual rule, 0 plus 1 minus 1. And this is actually equal to 0. So there's no distortion cost here. And that sum of terms is going to give us this score here. So this is basically the score, um, sorry, it's 0 plus that. So we've started with score 0, and then I've added in these terms corresponding to this transition. Now, there might be several other possibilities. So here's another one. So we could also say 1, 3, we must also. So now we uh, have an arc corresponding to the choice of translating the first three words as we must also. And this would lead to a state with must and also as the last two words. A bit string specifying that the first three words were translated. An endpoint of three, because this phrase ends at point three. And then again, some score, which in this case would have three Q log Q terms, one for we, one for must, one for also. It would have a G term of one, three, we must also. And in fact, the uh, distortion cost would again be zero here. Here's a third example. Another choice might be the following. One, two, three. So we might say three, three, also. So that corresponds to translating this word auch as also. And this would lead to the state star also. And we'd have zero, zero, one, zero, 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 specifying that this third word had been translated. We would have three because this ends at point three, and again some score minus maybe minus uh, three point eight or something. Okay. Now each of these states can also have uh, outgoing arcs. I should say there's probably going to be many, many more. Essentially, we have one arc for every possible phrase that could come at the start of this sentence. So th these uh, phrases will also have outgoing arcs. So for example, we might have the following. So we might then say, let's, one, two, three, four, five, let's translate words four and five as this criticism. Okay, so that's another choice of phrase. And that would actually lead to a state which is this criticism. And then we would have uh, one, one, zero, one, one, zero, zero. We'd have five as the end point, And we'd have some new score, maybe minus 3.7. That new score is calculated as this score plus um, various terms, uh, language modeling terms for each of these two words in the phrase. Again, um, a score for the phrase itself and a distortion score and so on. And similarly, these different states will also have outgoing arcs. Okay, so if we think of this entire graph where for each state we list all possible outgoing arcs, all possible phrases that can follow the state, we're going to have a very uh, large search space. Um, so every path through this directed graph is going to correspond to a translation. And the final states in these translations will look like the following. Um, we might have something like criticisms, seriously, 
So some choice of two words at the end of the sentence. Critically, the bit string at these final states is going to be complete, specifying that we've completed all the words in the sentence. We might have some endpoint, for example, six, and some minus, uh, some score, 10.4. Okay, and so the translation task can be visualized as trying to find a path to one of these end, end states that has the, the highest score, or trying to find the end state which has the highest possible score. So that's a useful way to visualize the search space. Um, it's important to realize that this graph is exponential in size. Why is that? Well, if we take any one of these bit strings, there are two to the n possible bit strings. So there are going to be an exponential number of nodes in this graph, and so that means that we're not going to be able to explore this graph exhaustively. But this is a very useful picture to have in mind, a graph, a directed graph, where we have states of the, the nodes, and these outgoing arcs are labeled with choices of phrases, and at each point the phrase combined with the previous state uh, specifies uh, the next state in this graph. So a little bit of notation to reflect this. Um, so for any state Q, for example, uh, star, star, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, zero. Um, so if this is Q, we'll define pH of Q to be a function that returns the set of possible phrases that can follow this state. So they might be things like one, two, we must. Uh, one, three, uh, we must also. Uh, we might have three, three, also and so on and so on. Um, so each of these phrases has to satisfy two different constraints. Okay. So for one thing we've got to make sure that we don't translate the same word twice. And so the phrase P, so P is a member of uh, the set PH of Q, P must not overlap with the bit string B. Okay. So in this case the bit string is empty and so it, any of these phrases uh, will be fine because for example, words one to two are certainly not translated. But if we consider a different state, so say we take Q equals we must, and then one, one. So we have the state reflecting the fact that the first two words translated, uh, something like this. Uh, then the state uh, we, sorry, the phrase, let's start again, the phrase one, one, we, this is maybe one possible phrase, is definitely not in pH of Q. So it's not a phrase that can follow this because it would mean that we translate word one again. So you can see now how these bit strings come into play. They constrain the set of possible phrases you can choose at each point. In particular, you can only choose phrases which translate new words. Okay. The second condition is that the distortion limit must not be violated. So remember, in each of these states, we store the endpoint of the previous phrase. So for example, this 2 means that the last phrase I chose ended at point 2. And that allows us to immediately check the uh, phrase distortion. So we can, for example, following this phrase, choose something like 3, 3 also, because uh, 2 plus 1 minus 3 is equal to 0, which is less than or equal to uh, D, 4 rather. Let's say the distortion limit is equal to 4 again. On the other hand, um, if we take some phrase like, uh, I don't know, uh, eight, eight, seriously, okay, then in this case, if we look at the distortion, we have two plus one minus eight, that is equal to a uh, magnitude of minus five, which uh, definitely violates this constraint, and so this phrase would not be allowed to follow this state, okay? so. To summarize, two constraints. Uh, any phrase in the set PHQ, remember this is the set of phrases that can follow the state Q, must not overlap with the bit string and also must satisfy this distortion limit.